الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله يا رب العالمين نحمده حمدا يكون لحقه قضاء ولشكره أداء وإلى ثوابه مقربا ولحسن مزيده موجبا ثم الصلاة والسلام على حبيبه وصفيه الذي أرسله رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of here and the hereafter. We praise him a praise that may fulfill his right and compensate for his uh, thanksgiving. And a praise that would take us closer to him and to his reward. convey our greeting and salutation to the Holy Prophet of Islam and his pure progenies. Sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ibadullah awsikum wa iyayi wa taqwallah. Yaqulullah tabaraka wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Kateem a'udhu billahi minash. Shaytan al-Lahin al-Rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين الله has surely bestowed his favor on believers when he commissioned in their midst a messenger from among themselves who recites to them his verses and makes them pure and teaches them the book and the wisdom while earlier they were in open error. Sadaqallah al azim We start with the usual reminder. First, as usual, can I ask everyone to turn their cell phone off and refrain from conversation? Number two, there are a number of events that we commemorated and commiserated during the, few, the last few days, and we are going to commemorate a number of them in, in the coming month. 25th of Rajab, was the anniversary of Shahada of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far. On Wednesday, uh, Wafat Abu Talib. Then yesterday was the day of Mab'ath, which is also coincides with Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj. Brothers of the Sunni community, they focus on Isra and Mi'raj rather than on the Mab'ath because uh, according to them, Mab'ath falls on the end of Ramadan rather than in the month of Rajab. Inshallah, during the month of Ramadan, when we have the last 10 days of the month, we focus on Quran and Quranic revelation and everything else. These are few of the issues that we will be addressing. Also, 8th of uh, March, which was Monday, is the 31st anniversary of the massacre of the Arlaab in Lebanon, in Lahia, which uh, the US, the Israelis, and with the help, financial support of the Saudis, uh, a huge truck was filled with 200 uh, kilograms of uh, TNT and the, to assassinate Marhum Ayatollah. Uh, said Muhammad Hassan Fadlullah because it w he was considered to be a threat at the time. Alhamdulillah, uh, he, they didn't succeed, but the consequence of that 
assassination attempt was the loss of over 80 civilian, primarily women and children, coming out of the mosque on Friday, and over 200 people were injured. We heard during the past uh, few weeks uh, from the administration that the policy regarding the Middle East is not going to change. And uh, the, if Biden, I mean, uh, if Trump was focusing on bombing Middle East, Biden is going to do the same thing. Which makes one wonder, according to the historian, they say that out of 244 years of as an independent state, United States has been engaged in 227 years of them in war. Haven't we reached a point that enough is enough and we should change our policy? 227 out of 244 years, constant war and looting, etc. Another thing which I want to remind everyone, as usual, the Islamic Center has taken the initiative to provide vaccination. We are at the moment uh, taking names uh, for people who are over 55 years old and possibly soon will be around 50. But the ninth, I think it's going to be the 18th or the 19th, which is Friday and the 22nd. There will be a, uh, a table outside for those of you who are interested to register after the Friday prayer, inshallah. We highly recommend the sooner everybody, uh, uh, Dr. Harb is here and he would correct me if I'm uh, mistaken, the sooner we get the majority of people vaccinated then we can relax a little bit. Until then, even those who are vaccinated have to take the precaution because there is always the possibility of uh, catching up something from others who, who refuse uh, to, to vaccinate. I send an email to a number of scholars in Qom trying to find, establish exactly what's their opinion. Even in the month of Ramadan, under the circumstance. The scholars have said there is no objection to it because the vaccine does not have any food or any vitamin that would strengthen anything. It's purely a medical issue. So even during the month of Ramadan, we can still take it. Please take the opportunity outside, register so that you will be vaccinated as quickly as possible. I want to focus today in the brief time that I have on the concept of Mabath, which was yesterday, the anniversary of Mabath. And that is the anniversary in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Holy Prophet or commissioned the Holy Prophet as the seal of prophethood. I want to just touch upon the significance of this uh, event. I know in the interest of time I cannot elaborate, but just scratching the surface or touching the, the tip of the iceberg, as they say. In Arabic, Ba'atha, which is the root of the letter, has been used in a variety of forms and for a variety of meanings. Ba'atha to sin, which is the same in the verses of the Holy Quran with arsala, but Ba'atha becomes more stronger. Uh, also to awaken, to wake up. On Dua Yom Al Arba'a, Laka Al Hamd, and Ba'athani Min Marqadi, Walo Shaita Jaltahu Sarmada. O Lord, praise be to you for giving me another opportunity to wake up. Otherwise, should you wish that sleep would have been turned into a permanent loss of life? So here is just to wake up. 
all of the other uh, meanings that I want to focus upon falls within the concept of waking up in one way or the other. لَقَدْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمَ الْبَعْثِ This is now in reference to the day of judgment, how the souls are resurrected and they wake up. But مَبْعَثِ is a unique use of the word Ba'atha to refer to an historic event in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Holy or commissioned the Holy Prophet to become the seal of prophethood by revealing to him the first verse of the Holy Quran. This Iqra and the next four verses or three or four verses that are clearly there in the beginning defines what we call the policy statement or the broad context under which Islam is going to operate. Knowledge and belief in Allah, they have to rest and work together. Iqra, read. But not any iqra. Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The knowledge that you gain by reading must be centered on the belief on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Detachment of knowledge from the sacred source becomes problematic. In the same way that if we were focusing on the sacred source without using our intellect, we become dogmatic. And this is the problem that we have in our community. And Quran says, استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم Submit to the command of God. Respond to the call of the Holy Prophet when he calls you to something that is going to breathe life into your, your soul. So Mab'ath uh, is the beginning of a series of events that ultimately led as a consequence to a change in human history. The beginning of revelation of Islam. Prophet of Islam, may peace be upon him and his pure progenies, aided with the revelation, embark on an intellectual revolution. revolution. And through opening of people's mind and heart. When the heart is connected to the sacred, the mind can function and uh, there will be a synthesis between the mind and the heart. Life becomes stable. Allah bidikrillah tatma'innul qulub. If you compare between the message of Islam that was revealed to the Holy Prophet with that of Moses and Jesus, that the, th the two other uh, grand, or call them uh, Anbiya or Al Azm, we see the difference. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam brought the tablet, the law, to bring together the dysfunctional, totally chaotic Bani Israel that they were not submitting to anything. Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam came, that law became corrupted because then it was purely interpreted in the material sense and the temple became the place for money laundering. According to the, to the literature, Jesus comes and throws in out the Kahans and, the, and everybody else uh, from the temple and goes outside and searches for the sacred in the faces of those who are marginalized. Islam comes. Balance between intellect as well as knowledge. It has to be part and parcel. So if we want to understand the essence of Islam, read it between the three or four verses. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq and the qalam. 
Between these, the essence of Islam can be encapsulated. Unfortunately, those days are gone. It is a call. Islam came to call everyone to a mono monotheistic faith, Tawheed, that doesn't remain abstract, only believe in one God that is floating somewhere. That, that un, uh, God, united God, is brought down into the life of the people. It's called to unity. It's called the community to gain virtue and, oh, and get rid of all the vices that you need, you need for the stability. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا فقر أشد من الجهل there is no poverty which is more strict and more disastrous than ignorance. It changes the paradigm. It changes, it shifts the mindset. Arab in the Jahiliya mindset that was considering purely um, wealth and material life as to be the only criteria for uh, somebody to be of some substance in the society changes around. It says intellect. You are worth, the more you have intellect, the more you are worth, not the worth green pieces of paper. And no, and no wealth or property more beneficial than wisdom. No wonder, I was reading a book a few weeks ago written by an American uh, astrophysicist by the name of Dr. Michael Hart. And the title of the bo book is The 100. A, a ranking of the most influential persons in human history. Look at what he says about the Holy Prophet. He puts the Holy Prophet as number one on the top of the list. He says, my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history of mankind who was supremely successful in both religion as well as secular. Not only was able to develop now, he sees religion and power into two different lenses, but he established an ideal religious structure and yet, at the same time, he established a, a reasonable social structure that led the revolution to go. So both of them, and then he goes on to make a comparison between Moses, uh, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, and why he has chosen Prophet Muhammad to be the number one. Scholars assert that if we were to look at the, the, the first policy statement of any ideology, that policy statement should be the one that we take as essentially the crux of the message. And when Quran starts with اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق and then علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم this is where we need to focus. Islam, without human intellect, without that synthesis that goes between human intellect and the heart, without connecting uh, knowledge without the sacred and sacred without the knowledge, aql, this is why in, the, in usul we have a principle. Kullama hakama bihi al-aql, hakama bihi al it has to be a relationship between the two. I cannot interpret and uh, 
comment on the verses of the Holy Quran detached from my intellect. And I cannot use my intellect without centering it on the, the sacredness that is everywhere within, within the world. It's only then we will succeed. How many tafasirs we have and exegesis of the Holy Quran that's totally abstract from human intellect. And how many scholars focus in the material sense totally detached from the, the sacredness of the reality. This is, if we want to understand the Holy Prophet and Mab'ath and the significance of Mab'ath in our life, go back, let's go back and start using that mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. It's only then we will be able to go back. There is no need, there is no use somehow sitting down and uh, reminiscing about the golden age of, of Islam when they did this and they did that. They did what they did. What are we going to do? May Allah awaken our, whole, our souls and our hearts and connect them together through Allah's blessing, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Again, for the benefit of those who came a little bit late, after the prayer there will be a table outside to register for vaccination. Please, we are trying to encourage everyone to register as soon as possible. Thank you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونتوب إليه من سيئات أعمالنا ثم الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين أخواتي وإخواني الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عباد الله أوصيكم بإياي بتقوى الله يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الحكيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كما أرسلنا فيكم رسولا منكم يتلو عليك عليكم آياتنا ويزكيكم ويعلمكم الكتاب والحكمة ويعلمكم ما لم تكونوا تعلمون يوم سبعة وعشرين من رجب ثلاثة سنة قبل الهجرة النبوية الشريفة يحمل ذكرى رسالة خالدة وبلادة النور والرحمة الإلهية والهداية الكبرى في هذا اليوم المبارك بدأت البعثة وانطلقت الرسالة عيد المبعث هو اليوم الذي بعث النبي الأكرم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لهداية الناس ودوى في سمعه الشريف نداء إنك لرسول الله الصادر عن ملاك الوحي ألقيت على كاهله مسؤولية كبرى وثقيلة جداً على نمط الوظيفة الهامة التي ألقيت على كاهل من سبقه من الأنبياء والرسل صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين وهو أيضا يوم الكرامة والمعجزة لأن الكرامة التي أكرمه الله أكرم الله بها نبيه هو أنه أسرى به من الأرض إلى السماء في عروجه ببدنه حسب أقوال في يوم 27 رجل 
وعندما ننتقي هذه الذكريات فإن علينا أن نستنطقها وأن نستوحيها وأن ندرس تأثيراتها العملية في حياتنا إضافة إلى مسؤولياتنا أمامها فعندما ننطلق مع موعد تاريخي في أي موعد من المواعيد النبوية فإن علينا أن نشعر بأن موعد بأنه موعد لنا في حاضرنا وفي مستقبلنا فكيف يمكن لنا أن نستوعبه وكيف يمكن لنا أن نقرأه وأن ندرسه فالله سبحانه وتعالى يحدثنا في القرآن الكريم عن الدور الذي أوكله إلى رسوله من أجل أن يفتح عقول الناس على آفاق جديدة للمعرفة وعلى خطوط جديدة للحركة وعلى مواقع روحية عالية تمنح الإنسان الصفاء والنقاء فالنبي جاء من أجل أن يخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور وكان المجتمع مجتمع ضلال ولعل أعظم الضلال هو هذا العقل المتحجر الذي يستغرق في حجر ليحوله إلى آلة يسقط إنسانيته عندما يجعل هذه الإنسانية تتعبد للتراب وتتوهم أن له أسرارا ليس لها أي أي حقيقة وكانت الصنمية والوثنية منهجا ينفتح على ذهنية تعجل تجعل الحجر صنما وتجعل الشهوات صنما والتخلف صنما وتقدس الجهل تماما كما تقدس الحجر فلم تكن المسألة مسألة عبادة الحجر فقط ولكنها كانت منهجا للتفكير والعبادة والسلوك والعلاقات العامة وذلك هو الذي عبر عنه القرآن بالضلال المبين ومن الطبيعي أن ذلك كله كان يمثل حالة من الظلم الروحية والعقلية والعاطفية والحركية ومن هنا يحدثنا الله سبحانه وتعالى عن المهمة التي أوكلها إلى رسوله وجعل كتابه الأداة التي تحمل الإشراق والنور ألف لام را كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربه إلى صراط العزيز الحميد فأن يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور يعني أن يكتشفوا صراط الله الذي يتميز بالعزة التي توحي بالقوة ويتميز بالحمد الذي يوحي بامتداد صفاته في مواقع الحمد التي تطل على الإنسان ليتخلق بأخلاق الله ومن خلال هذه الآيات نستوحي أن مهمة النبي لم تكن تتمثل بتلاوة آيات الله فقط بل أضاف إلى ذلك صفة المعلم أن النبي استوعب الرسالة كلها في عقله وقلبه وإحساسه وشعوره وآفاقه بحيث كان المعلم للرسالة في مفرداتها كلها والدور الثاني الذي جعل الله تعالى للنبي هو أن يعلم الحكمة وليس المراد بالحكمة هي مضامين الكتاب ولكن الحكمة فيما نستوحيه من الكتاب هي حركية الكتاب في الواقع فالكتاب يعطي النظرية ولكن الحكمة تعطي التطبيق بمعنى أنه كان يملك ثقافة يستطيع أن يحركها في الواقع بحيث تصل إلى النتائج السليمة من خلال ما يملك من وضوح الرؤية للأشياء في حركة الفكر والتطبيق وقد تحدث الله سبحانه وتعالى للنبي عن دور ثالث وهي وهو دور التسكية وهي المهمة التربوية التي يشرف فيها النبي على حركة المجتمع ليرصد فيه الانحرافات التي تحدث هنا وهناك ليندفع إليها وليصحح ما أخطأوا فيها ويقوم من حرفوا فيه ولقد كان دور النبي أن يدخل إلى إنسانية الإنسان من أجل أن يزكيها ويطهرها وينميها فعلينا في يوم الإسلام يوم المبعث أن نتحسس مسؤوليتنا 
عن الإسلام كله فالنبي جاء من أجل العالم وإذا كانت الرسالة تتحرك من أجل الإنسان كله والحياة كلها فعلينا أن نعمل من أجل أن نحرك الإسلام في العالم ومن خلال ما نتزود به من ثقافة وما ننفتح به من روح وما نتحرك به من خطوات سليمة في الدرب المستقيم مع الأسف الشديد لقد جمدنا الإسلام معلبناه وجعلناه جسرا نقطعه من أجل أسماءنا حتى تكبر أكثر ومن أجل مطامعنا حتى تتضخم أكثر لنكن جند الإسلام لنجعل الذات من أجل الإسلام ولا نجعل الإسلام من أجل الذات نسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن يجعلنا من الذين تحسسوا مسؤوليتهم وتحركوا مثقفين عاملين في الدفاع عن الإسلام الصحيح إن شاء الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد لأنك أفضل ما صليت على أحد من خلقك وصل على أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين علي بن أبي طالب وصل على فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على صدقي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي الشباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد الحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره والمستشهدين بين يديه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رجاء قراءة سورة الفاتحة على روح أمواتنا جميعا لا سيما الروح المرحوم العلامة الشيخ محمد جواد شري قبلها الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Please be reminded again that uh, registration